This is Robert Adut from yaymath.org presenting Yaymath in studio, live from Hollywood, California this time. Um, and I will look at the beautiful hands on the walls. Couldn't have picked a better facility for this. I, I want to like creepily grab them and as if I'm a disembodied hand of long fingers. Sorry, my life. Uh, today we're going to be talking about quadratic inequalities. And maybe you could tell I'm in a really good mood because I love teaching this way, a very unique way that just occurred to me in class one day. And uh, it's different than the books. And so we're gonna just proceed forward with this unique take that I have on this uh, process. And then at the very end, I'm gonna introduce to you what the books do so that it makes sense to you. But I think what the books do is they kind of, they, they miss the point often and they make it like uh, process driven without having any sort of visual understanding. I'm gonna help you see what's going on here so it makes perfect sense to you. All right, let's do this, yay math. So the question is, what are the solutions for X? What are we allowed to plug in here and here such that this whole right side is greater than zero? All right, so this is the idea. What would help first is to recognize that this is a parabola. This is a quadratic function because you see it's x squared. And so if it's a parabola, it could be a great idea for us to actually get a fix on what this parabola looks like to help us, uh, help us guide us to, our, to help guide us to the solutions. So pretending it's a parabola, let's like make this y equals x squared minus 5x plus 4. And one way to solve this parabola is to actually factor the thing. So if we're going to factor it, okay, let's say we have over here factoring, keep it equal to zero, x and x, multiply to positive four and add to negative five. What are two numbers that multiply to positive four and add to negative five? Those numbers must both be negative because they multiply to a positive. So that'd be minus one and minus four. Solving for x, x equals one here. So if we plug in one, that becomes zero. Or if we plug in four here, plug in four, that makes this zero. So x equals one, x equals four. What that basically means in terms of points is that when x is one, y is zero. And when x is four, y is zero. So let's get a feel for what this graph looks like, parabolically speaking. Let's give us a little more space here. So we got one and we got four. Boom and boom. So our parabola goes through these two points definitely. Keeping in mind that this is an uppy parabola, it's a smile, it creates a valley. The reason we know that it creates a valley is that this x squared is positive. You'll see that it's a positive leading coefficient. The coefficient leading it, like the leading part, if we want to use a Hollywood reference, is positive. So because this parabola is in a positive state of mind, it is facing up to the heavens. Something like that, all right? And if we were to reintroduce this y as part of our graph, we can think of it like, follow, like the following. Suppose it's over here, y instead of zero, we have y is less than. y is less than, think about it. If y is a measure of up and down, and y is small, meaning y is less than, do you think we would shade up from this parabola or we would shade down from this parabola for y less than? Right, I phrased it that way so that hopefully it spoke to you. y less than would be shade down. So we're going to be really shady below the parabola. There you go. That was my best shady voice. Well, not voice, I didn't, didn't say a word. So what's interesting is all this blue stuff on the x-axis, because the solutions involve x, all this up to one, jump over from one to four, not a solution, and then from four all the way to infinity, those numbers work for x. This is basically solved. Everything from negative infinity up to one and from four on to infinity. And we can prove it, we can prove it. Let's say we wanted to try x values to the left of one such as zero. Zero is a good one. If we plug in zero for x into this original equation, it should supposedly work. Let's see if it does. So we plug in zero here. We would get zero is less than 
0 squared is 0 minus 5 times 0 is 0 plus 4. We would get 0 plus 0 plus 4. 0 is less than 4. Is this true? Yes. So all these points will work. Let's plug in stuff in the middle of 1 and 4, like 2. Let's plug in 2. Is, we'll put it in red to imply that it's not okay. No bueno. So here we go. Plug in 2. 0 less than. 2 squared is 4. Minus 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 4. We'll get 0 less than. This is negative 6 plus 4. Hook it up. This is uh, negative 2. Is this true? No, it's not. And then anything beyond will work like 5 and 6 and 7 and 10 and all those other values. So let's, let's insert what the books do. The books have you create these two what I call border values and then you have this little chart here, 1, 4, and you test values beyond, between, and beyond. But they don't really give you any context as to why they work or why they don't. The reason that some work and some don't is because of the parabola and because of shading. This would be shading down. So for example, we just plugged in zero and zero worked, the point zero. So then you could put like a check mark out here for the values below one and not including it by the way, because this is not or equal to, this is not or equal to zero, it's just zero is less than. Had it been that, you could include one. One would be okay. But now since it's not, one is not okay. We don't include the border value. Then we plugged in, what did we plug in? Two, two didn't work. And then for good measure, let's plug in five and make sure it does work. Put these in here, one and four. Let's plug in five, la 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 la. Zero, less than five squared, 25. Minus 5 times, whoa, how about that? Minus 25 plus 4. And again, we get the same value. 0 is less than 4. We are good. So, let's express the answer. The answer is x is less than 1 or x is greater than 4. You could also express it as an interval. A lot of students get to interval notation in greater classes. So that would mean everything from negative infinity up to 1, non-inclusive of 1 because it's not or equal to, so we don't include the border value. Union starting back at 4 and on to positive infinity. Had it been inclusive of 1, had it been or equal to, we would write a bracket here like that. This bracket means inclusive of 1, inclusive of 4. Parentheses means non-inclusive. Okay. Brief explanation why we don't include um, bracket over here. The way I think of it is you can never really grab a hold of something like infinity or negative infinity. Since you can't grab it and include it, it's going to be parentheses by nature, meaning non-inclusive. As, as, as you continue to reach for infinity, you won't get there. So you can't include it. That's the way I remember. So infinity always has these parentheses. And that's basically the idea. Rather than thinking of it just in terms of these border values, think of it in terms of a parabola. And let's say, hypothetically, if it was 0 is greater than, 0 is greater than, OK? That would mean like y is greater than. If y was greater than, where would we shade? Would we shade up from the parabola or down? Of course, we would shade up. We'd shade this red stuff. And now what values for x would be the solution? Everything between 1 and 4 would work now, and everything beyond would not, had it been shading up. All right? So let's give you another example. Great, so for this example, we see that if this used to be y, y is over here, it's like y is greater than, okay? It's like y is greater than, this parabola face is up, so we're sort of being detectives here. We're facing up, and we are shading up. So it's going to be 
One of those answers like between something and something, most likely, okay? The only exception to whether it was this or not is like sometimes the parabolas might go like this. Imagine a parabola that was an uppy one, like one of these, and you shade it up. What values of x are shaded here on this axis? None. So then a situation like this where the parabola is not even hitting the x-axis, when there's no border values, would be no solution. Same as if you had something that was down, you know, and you shade down, it doesn't hit x, so that would be no solution. Or what if you're shading up from a parabola like this? If you shade it up, right, this would be, everything would be a solution. Imagine you had a downward facing parabola that didn't hit the x-axis and it would say y is, what it would look like, it was y is greater than, let's say greater than or equal to, and that would be like negative x squared, da, 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 something like that. So this implies that we're shading up because y is greater than, shading up, and this negative x squared implies it's a negative parabola, frowny face, sad, and it goes down like this, and it was, the example of that parabola would be one that doesn't touch the x-axis. Those are scenarios in which there's all real numbers. You would actually say all real numbers would work here, okay? Let's do this example because it's a little complex. We look at it and we say like, well, if we tried to factor, we would see that it is non-factorable, it's prime. So we can come up with another solving mechanism. And one solving mechanism we can use is the quadratic formula. So let's, get ahead and, let's go ahead and do that quadratic formula. X equals, this is my method for remembering the quadratic formula. Probably saw it in another video. Um, it really has to do with a story about the negative boy who couldn't decide, yes or no, to go to a radical party in Hollywood. But the boy was a square and he missed out on four awesome chicks. And the party was all over, get it, at 2 a.m. That's pretty awesome. Four awesome chicks, you know, should be so lucky. It's a lot of texting. Um, if you have to like, you know, engage four awesome chicks. It'd be cool if it was just like one awesome chick, should all be so lucky. Um, or one awesome dude, whatever, whatever. It works for your quadratic formula and your lifestyle. <laughs> uh, so let's actually solve this. So here we go, negative b. b is negative one here, so that's one plus or minus square root of one square, negative one squared is one minus four times two times negative five, throwing all those in, all over two times two, which is four. This becomes one plus or minus square root of this will be a plus because it's double negative. Four times two is eight. Eight times five is 40. So this is one plus 40. This is 41 all over four. So these are your two solutions. One plus root 41 over four and one minus root 41 over four. If you pop those in the calculator to get decimals, to just get a feel for where they are. I actually did that already. Those numbers are, the positive one is 1.85 and one minus root 41 over four is negative 1.35. So these are the values, rounded, where this parabola crosses the x-axis. So now here's a challenge. I bet we could come up with what interval works for these particular border values without necessarily needing to test every single interval. You recall like what the books do, they'll have you do something like this, Let's put the negative one over here, negative 1.35 and 1.85. And so what they'll do is like test over here, test like negative four, and then you know you could test zero, that's an easy one to plug. And then you could plug in numbers like five and which one works, and then you mark that as the answer. But I bet we could do it without even messing around with that. We will, we will to, we'll do one to confirm, but we don't need to if we understand what's going on visually. It's really exciting to me. So let's explore. This is, an uppy parabola, for sure. We know that because the positive leading role is feeling very positive. This is positive too. Smile, facing up to the heavens. 
No limits like our lives. So we know that that's true. We also know that this probably hits the x-axis. Boom, at these two places. So to get a feel for it, that's roughly negative 1.85. Is that right? No, 1.35. And this is 1.85. And we have upi parabola. Here it is. There it is. And are we shading up or are we shading down? Y is greater than. Y is greater than. See the Y over here. This zero used to be Y. And if Y is a measure of up and down, we are shading up. It's this. So our solution is between these two values. Our solution set. And uh, let's actually practice that thing now. So suppose I changed it to or equal to. It's everything between these two. That would be inclusive negative 1.35 to 1.85 inclusive. And this problem is solved. Let's go ahead and confirm that everything between here should work and that everything beyond will not. All right, let's do it. Let's go with between. Let's do like the zero. Let's do the zero one. Plugging in zero here, we get zero, two times zero squared is zero minus zero minus five. So we'll get negative five is less than or equal to zero. Is this true? Yes, it is. So there's your solution set. So don't be intimidated if you see something that can't factor. Just get the solutions other ways, like quadratic formula, and then understand where the parabola is, whether you're shading in or out, up or down, and then the solution set involves every x value therein. All right. Um, that's it. That's the whole lesson. I hope you liked it. I hope it made sense to you. And uh, we'll try this. I don't know, but we'll try. Awkward ending. I just had a weird handshake with an eighth grader the other day, and we both felt like an eighth grader. We're like, hey, man, what's up? And I like grabbed his thumb, and we're both like, oh, awkward eighth grade moment. And I shrank down like that. And then he felt better because I didn't, I didn't pretend that I'm any less awkward than he is. And we bonded. And then we walked away. Bye. <laughs>